so here we go. We are going to graph 1 over x squared plus 1. We should recognize this as a rational function. We should be able to make some quick assumptions about it. Um, we should be looking for holes, zeros, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes. If we look at this real quickly, though, um, the horizontal asymptote, whoops, the horizontal asymptote is at um, uh, y equals zero. There's no vertical asymptotes because the denominator will never be zero, it's x squared plus one. Uh, there's no uh, uh, zeros, none, because the numerator will never equal zero, therefore there can't be any holes. So it's just this. We'll see what happens. Um, so job number one, we find y prime equals we could follow chain rule, we could follow quotient rule, or I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus one to the negative one, so I can just follow chain rule. This becomes negative one, x squared plus one to the negative two, times two x, times the derivative of the inside. I need that chain rule. Algebraically, these should be the same. If you use quotient rule, it's the same thing. Okay. I need to set this equal to zero. So I am going to rewrite it in good or better, um, um, what's it called, algebra notation, and set it equal to zero. This is another rational function. So I need to see where the numerator equals zero and it equals zero and x equals zero. Um, this function always exists because x squared plus 1 squared is always greater than 0, or it'll never be 0, I should say. So x equals 0 is our um, one of our important points. So I'm going to start my graph over here. And at x equals 0, I need to find the y of 0. I plug back in up here, I get 1 over 0 squared plus 1, that equals 1. So now I know that the point 0, 1 is on my graph, and that's where it is. I need to find y double prime. I think this time quotient rule's got to be better, so I'm going to take the derivative of that. Right? I, it's just a simplified version. I haven't done any algebra with it, um, so, so I can take the derivative of that. So I've got y double prime equals derivative of the top, negative 2, times the bottom, x squared plus 1 squared minus the derivative of the bottom. i got to follow a chain rule, 2, x squared plus 1 to the 1 times 2x times so this 2x is the derivative of the inside, times the top, negative 2x over the bottom squared, x squared plus 1 to the fourth. Just like before, I care about where it is 0 or d and e. It's never d and e, so I don't really need to worry about the denominator. I just need to set this numerator equal to 0. So we've got some, some math to do to simplify all of this mess. Notice a negative times a negative is a positive. So I'm going to keep, take this side and simplify this right here. I'm going to simplify this. And I'm going to get positive 8 x squared, x squared plus 1. That is one part of it. And I'm going to set that equal to this side. Um, and I'm going to add this to both sides. So this is 2x squared plus 1 squared. Um, and this is actually kind of nice, right? This is uh, uh, stuff that I can start simplifying. I can divide everything by 2 and turn this into a 4 over here, right? I can divide both sides by x squared plus 1, and I'll just have 1 x squared plus 1 on that side, and that means I have 4x squared equals x squared plus 1. Just to go over that again, I divided everything by 2, so this 2 went away, and that two, 8 became a 4. I divided 
this side by x, both sides by x squared plus one. So this x squared plus one went away, and that goes away. So I just have that. I need to look at this and recognize this as a uh, quadratic equation. Anytime I have a quadratic equation, my best bet is to set it equal to zero. So I am going to I'm going to move up here and set it equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides and subtract one. So I really am going to have 3x squared uh, minus one equals zero. Um, I only have an x squared, so I can solve for this directly. I don't need to, to factor it. I don't need to do any, anything fancy about it. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I'm going to divide by 3. So I get x squared equals 1 third. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. x equals the square root of 1 third. Here's the part that a lot of students forget, and I'm going to change colors for this. You take the square root of something, you have to put in plus or minus. It is imperative that we do that, plus or minus. Um, uh, so these are the potential um, points of inflection. I need to find the y values of these points. So I'm going to plug in the square root of one third into that equation. One over the positive square root of one third squared plus one. Well, one third squared is, a well, square root of one third squared is one third. One third plus one is four thirds, and it's in the denominator, so this is actually three fourths. So, somewhere over here, we have the square root of one third, and it equals positive three-fourths, okay? I need to do the same thing for uh, negative root one-third. If I plug in negative one-third here, I'm going to just show you real quick. If I put a negative right there, that's negative root one-third. When I square it, it becomes positive. So then my answer ends up being exactly the same thing. So I've got that point there. These should be symmetric. Okay. So the last thing that I need to do is do my check my number lines. I care about, so for y prime, I care about 0. For y double prime, I care about root 1 third negative and root 1 third positive y double prime. Now those are the points that I care about. All right, so I need to pick a number less than zero to plug into y prime. This is y prime right there. So I know the denominator is always positive because it's squared, so I don't need to worry about that. Negative 2x times a negative number, any of these numbers are negative, so like negative 5 is positive. I know that it is positive. To the right of zero, let's pick positive five. Negative two times positive five is negative 10, it's negative. The denominator will always be positive, so overall it's negative. All right, I need a, so that's my y prime. I need to do the same thing for y double prime. I'm gonna pick a number less than the square root of negative one third doesn't matter what I pick, but I happen to know that negative one is less than negative root one third. So I'm going to take negative one and I am going to plug it into, oh, I don't have a nice simplified version of this equation. That's, that's icky. Shoot, I wish I had that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to simplify this and put it up here. I'm going to say y double prime equals I've got uh, negative two, negative two x squared plus one squared minus, all right, so I gotta be plus two, two, two is eight x squared, eight x squared, um, x squared plus one, x squared plus one. 
All right. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 into this big thing. If I plug negative 1 in, this becomes uh, 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 if I plug in 1. I should write y double prime of negative 1 equals. So then I'll keep on going down the line. I've got 8. Negative 1 squared is 1 times negative 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2. So I have negative 8 plus 16. That's positive. So I know that this is concave up in here. Um, I'm going to continue with my 1, and I'm going to plug in 1 for the right side of this. So y double prime of 1. Do the same math. It's going to be negative 2. 1 squared is 1. So this is going to be 2 squared, which is times 4, plus plugging in 1 here. I'm going to get the exact same math. So, this also is concave up. Now I need some number between negative root, three, root one third and positive root one third, so I'm going to find y double prime of zero. Whoops, of zero. I'm going to do that. I'm going to end up with negative two. Zero squared plus one squared is one plus 8 times 0 squared, well that's just 0, so that's going to go away. Negative 2. So I end up with that shape. Okay, now it's finally time to do our graphing. I know from before we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0, so I know that I need to be approaching that as I move from this point over. I have a positive slope with a positive concavity. That is going to be the scoop upward. I now know that between root one third and negative root one third and zero, I have a positive slope and a negative concavity. That is that sort of shape. And then from zero to root three, I have a negative slope with a positive concavity. So that is that it's going downhill. I'm sorry, with a negative concavity. I said positive, I meant negative, negative concavity. And then I have a negative slope with a positive concavity, so I scoop up and I approach my horizontal asymptote. So I get this like little bump. Um, that's it.